Hello everyone. Welcome to video lecture series of Computer Organization and Architecture. Today's topic is Input Output Interface. In this video, I will be telling you what is interface in the case of the computer system, what is input output interface and what do you understand by IO port. Let us begin. See, first you must understand what is the meaning of the interface. See, if you have two pieces and you have to join that, then when you are joining those two pieces means the shared boundary that is known as the interface, right? Similarly, in the case of the computers, you are aware that there are various kinds of peripherals, many components may be there. So, whenever there is a requirement to attach two or more components, there is a requirement of the interface, right? Or the shared boundary that is known as the interface. You know the term peripherals, like the external devices, the components which can be connected with the computer system. So when the peripherals are connected with the computers, there is a requirement of a communication link. Because of those communication links, the CPU can interact with the peripherals. So interface, you can understand these are some kind of hardware components which is actually kept in between the CPU and peripherals and these hardware components, they manages and control the transfer and they are known as a input output interface, right? These hardware components. It means when we are talking about the communication link, which is established in between the CPU and the peripherals. So to facilitate that particular communication link to help the information transfer between the processor and peripherals interfaces required. So what is the purpose of the communication link? Its purpose is to resolve the difference which exists between the computer and the peripheral. If you would like to understand in detail, there are various kinds of differences which may exist in between the computer, in between the CPU and the peripherals. What are those kinds of differences? First is the nature of peripheral. If you can see the nature of peripheral device that may be electromagnetic or electromechanical, while the nature of CPU is electronic and when CPU is interacting or the CPU and peripherals are interacting with each other, it means they are having different modes of operations, but they are going to deal with the same kind of signal. It means conversion is being required for that. CPU runs at a faster rate while peripheral devices at a slower rate. It means there is a requirement of the synchronization mechanism. You can observe the data code and formats. They are different in the CPU and the memory, right? Peripherals also. So data codes and formats are also different. There may be various peripheral devices. If one peripheral is operating, so that peripheral must not disturb the other's operation. It means there is a requirement that the operating mode of peripheral devices can be controlled without disturbing the other peripheral devices which is connected with the CPU. So these are the various factors because of which the interface is actually required. So as you are aware that there is a requirement of a hardware component and this hardware component resolves the differences between the CPU and the peripheral. These hardware components are known as a interface unit. It means as many as peripherals are required, those many interface units are required. There cannot be any common interface units in between the multiple peripherals. As you can see in this particular diagram, there is a processor you can see. There are several peripherals, keyboard, display terminal, printer, magnetic disk and tape. And each and every peripheral is having a dedicated interface. So you must remember there must not be any common interface. And each peripheral, as you can see over here, there are three peripherals. Each peripheral has its own 
controller. So there is a dedicated controller also each and every peripheral. Suppose you are talking about the printer. So the controller related to this printer, what is the function? The function of the printer controller will be uh, like controlling paper motion, controlling print timing, selection of printing characters. So that is why every peripheral is having a controller and the controller can be kept separately or that controller can be integrated within the peripheral that is what the controller related to the peripherals here you can see io bus input output bus so io bus it consists of data lines address lines and control lines over here magnetic disk printer terminals they are what the peripherals as you know, magnetic disk and tapes, they are used for the like backup storage, you know, printer is output device, keyboard input, like accordingly you are aware with. Now you can see the IO bus, this is connected to the processor and it is connected with the peripheral and each and every uh, like peripheral is having an interface unit in between. What happened when this particular processor, it places any address, any address of the device. So where it is going to place, the address will be placed in the address bus. So when processor is placing a address on the address lines, now each of the attached interface unit, right? Because each and every interface unit, each and every peripheral that is having an address decoder. So each interface which is attached to IO bus that contains a decoder, address decoder, which monitors the address lines. And what happened? When interface detects its own address, suppose this interface detects its own address, it means that particular function that is related to the printer so when interface detects its own address that interface activates the path in between the bus lines and the device which controls the overall operation so it means then this particular printer will be active connection will be established and accordingly data transfer can takes place it means all peripherals whose address does not correspond or does not matches with the address which is available on the bus, right? Which is available on the address bus means all those peripherals will be disabled by their interface. This peripheral will be disabled by this interface. This peripheral will be disabled by this interface. So the only interface whose address matches correspondingly that will activate and establish a like connection in between so this is how you can understand it now when we are talking about the commands the kinds of commands the interface may receive so there are four possible kinds of command and out of those four anyone can be received by the printer sorry anyone can be received by the interface first is the control control means it is related to activate the peripheral as in this particular case printer is activated so whether the printer is activated and what is to be done that is related to the control second command is status status means checking multiple conditions multiple test condition which particular peripheral is active or not or accordingly it means to test multiple test condition the status command is used Data output. Data output means here there is a data output. From the, this particular term, output is just clear that sending data out, sending data out from buses to any one of the required register. And data input, just opposite function of the data output means here any of the interface which is active, that particular interface can take data in from the peripheral means data is being taken in and that is to be kept into the buffer register while in the case of the data out it is to be sent to any of the required output register so these are the four possible commands coming to the next you are aware that 
when you are talking about the interaction so cpu communicates with io devices at the same time it communicates various memory units also it means cpu is communicated with memory and io devices so you must be aware about how the data between the processor and these devices flow and definitely the data is going to be flow with the help of the system buses it means how system buses is being connected in between the processor and these devices there are three ways in which the system bus can be allocated to them first is separate set of buses means one set of buses for the memory and another set of buses for the io devices as you can see in this particular diagram here this is a processor so separate set control address and data for memory unit and separate control data and address for the input output system second way there is a common address and data bus but separate control lines you can see in this particular diagram address bus and data bus they are common for the memory and io system but control buses are separate for the memory and io means isolated io isolated input output means whether the input or output read or write is to be performed into the memory or from the io right that is to be done accordingly on the basis of the status of this control bus and the third kind of connection where there is a common address data and control bus so in this particular diagram you can see the system bus is common for memory and io devices right so here system bus is common and this kind of configuration is known as a memory mapped io means common system bus so this is memory mapped io so there are these three ways via which system bus can be allocated with them. now let me give you an example about an i port input output port here an example has been shown for the io interface so in this particular diagram you can see that there are two data registers called ports port a and port b there is a control register there is a status register you can see there is a bus buffer also timing and control circuit right so these many components you can observe and the interface that communicates with the cpu through the data bus so interface this actually communicates with cpu with the help of data bus and in the timing and control you can see there is chip select register select are you read and are you write these are two what these are two control lines are you read and are you write so control lines are actually specify an input or output and these four registers port a port b control and status these four registers communicate directly with the io devices io devices which is attached to the interface so here you can see io data io data right so this is what the bidirectional means data can be sent out or data can be taken in from the device so io data to and from any particular device can be transferred either port from port a or from port b from these two ports data can be sent out or data can be taken in so here the interface may operate with an output device or with an input device depending upon and third possible combination means interface can operate with a device which requires both input and output it means there are three possibilities interface may connect with or may interfere or interact with input output or input and output so for this third particular case you can immediately take an example suppose you are talking about the magnetic disk so magnetic disk that particular unit transfer data in both the directions magnetic disk in the magnetic disk you can write the data you can read the data but both the operations cannot be performed at the same time it means interface can use bidirectional lines but when you are talking about input means keyboard output means as a printer it means interface may operate with 
input device or output device right suppose you are taking an example of the printer it means it will only output data so this is how you can understand how this particular diagram or example you can explain but now to understand it in more detail which kind of operation or which register is to be selected here you can see there is a chip select cs cs this is active high input it means when this will be one input will be active high then this chip select will be selected means timing and control and when this chip select will be selected then only it is going to perform the function in case of zero active low this chip will not be selected and none of the function will be performed now rs1 rs0 there are two register selects two inputs right so here you can see there are four registers so depending upon the combination on these register selects any one of the register can be selected you can draw a table as you can see in this particular case cs chip select as you know that it must be active high one then only it will perform the function if this is zero then none of the function will be performed data buses will be in the high impedance state rs not rs1 there are two inputs means four possible combinations 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 0 0 port a register 0 1 port b 1 0 control register 1 1 status register so depending upon the input what kind of input if this is 1 this is 0 it means control register is being selected so this is how one register among the four is going to be selected and accordingly depending upon the control signal whether read operation is being performed or write operation is being performed this is how it is to be done if you have taken an example where there are eight eight registers right as in this particular case four registers and you could have drawn for eight registers so in that particular case register select lines must be three because three lines will gives you eight possible combinations and accordingly that could be drawn so this is how you can explain the connections in between the interface unit and which is which register is to be selected and how the data is going to be transferred so you must remember that command is always passed to the input output device and that command is passed just by sending a word to the appropriate interface register thank you so much for watching this video